Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics where we grow cool plants. And today I've got a full grown fig tree that's behind me. And again, this is a property here in Walnut Creek, California, where I've um, planted it with fruit trees about 10 years ago. And we're about 30 miles east of San Francisco to give you the bearings. And right now at the end of November, our daytime highs are in the 60s and our nighttime lows are in the 40s. And going into December, January, we'll have a lot of days that are um, just hovering around and sometimes just a little bit below um, freezing temperatures. But here we have a very productive um, fig tree of the green variety. I don't. So a lot of you viewers have been emailing me questions. I've got figs on my fig tree, and what do I do? Do I remove it, keep it? You know, and you're um, just not sure what's happening. And one of the first questions I ask you is, do you live in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere? Um, we're here in the United States, again, um, Walnut Creek, California. We're in the northern hemisphere. If you live anywhere north of the equator, you're in the northern hemisphere. And if you're in the northern hemisphere, you're going into winter, no matter where you live. And I've lived even in southern Florida where it's a tropical climate, and maybe your fig tree is still producing and looking green. But no matter where you are, if you're going into winter, all plants um, have a dormant period where they slow down their growth. But with these figs, and I just want to share with you, if you zoom in a little closer over here, You'll notice that there's still some figs on here, but our nighttime low temperatures are so cold as you can see that these fruit are rotting before they ever have a chance of getting close to ripening. So for those of you with young, younger figs being in their first year, or second year of development, it's helpful to the plant to remove these energy consuming figs off of the tree. And we can just drop them to the floor and they can rot and become part of the compost um, for the plant. So I've just removed those figs um, as I've advised a lot of um, viewers as well. The other thing I wanna talk about is pruning. And let's take a look inside of the tree with what's happening um, here. If you take a look at the way this owner has been pruning his trees, you can see that this ball has been here for many, many years. And the owner is simply selecting from a variety of branches which continuously come out of here and will grow um, anywhere from a foot to two feet. And these are the supporting branches. And, um, but what I don't like about what I see here is there's a lot of exposed ends, which could have been pruned a little bit closer so that as the tree heals, it would end up healing within the wood as this one here is getting close to closing up. And here's another one down below that'll close probably over the next two to three years. It's gonna take that much longer for it to close. But one other thing to consider is to select how many branches you want coming out of here. Um, one issue being, if we take a look over here, is there's two stems coming out of the same area. So we can pick and select the younger one or the mature larger one. And here I'm gonna um, remove the smaller younger one. And then with the longer one over here, I can bring it back to about one third of its growth. And we'll prune it at an angle allowing the bud to have a little bit more room between, let me actually show you another example. So when I prune, I'm pruning it such that this here, right where the leaf meets with the stem, that's gonna form the bud, which will create next year's growth as well as fruit. So I'm allowing it to be a little bit wider on this side than on this side of the node, which is the behind part of it. So when you cut it at an angle, you're gonna cut it at an angle that way. The other thing I wanna point out is this branch over here is, is, is growing in a downward direction. This is a branch I definitely do not want and I'll be pruning and removing it. And then now there's still four more branches that are gonna be supporting next year's um, leaves and I don't want it all to compete. Consider each branch as an individual tree. So we're gonna to wanna to select, I'm gonna remove the smallest branch out. We can remove this one as well. So now we've got two branches and then I'm just gonna thin this down to its growth is about um, a foot and a half. I'm gonna bring it down to about six inches and we're gonna prune it like so. And now this area is done. In regards to the timing of the year to be pruning your plants, you can notice that these leaves are still green. Again, here we are at the end of November and the plant still is quite green. But within the next 30 days, all of these leaves will turn yellow. As you can see, there's quite a bit of yellowing happening around me. Um, and these leaves will fall off. And here's another leaf that's getting close to um, falling off as well. The leaves will fall off all within the next 30 days. And then in regards to timing for pruning your fig, I would recommend that you wait until all chance of frost has passed. In Los Angeles, or where I live in Los Angeles, um, all chances of frost has passed 
by the second week of January. So you can start pruning your figs in as early as later January um, if you live in the Los Angeles area. Um, and again, if you live in the Los Angeles Hills, you might have to wait a couple more weeks for that chance of frost to pass you as well. Other things I want to point out to you is if you take a look at some of the old pruning job within, I just want to point out some of the damage. If you come down here, you'll notice that this here, this part over here, it was pruned and there's um, a segment of dead wood that was left. This was a job that was done years ago and has just been sitting within the tree rotting. What we want to do is um, try to remove it. Instead of cutting it out, I want to see if I can push it out so I can get more of that dead wood out. Um, and I did, but you can see that it's as dead as a cork. But we're gonna to wanna to seal this so it doesn't become an entryway for wood boring insects such as termites and beetles. Another example is if you come down a little bit lower, you can see over here there was some more damage um, within the tree as well. And this may have been a branch up above that was pulled and peeled down and tore the bark. And you can see since then it's been closing. But in the meantime, this is all exposed wood that we're gonna be, um, that we're gonna be sealing as well. One last thing I want to share with you in regards to beetles. Take a look over here. If you take a look at this branch over here, you can see that it was pruned. And the center part of it right there is huge entryway going right into the heart of the wood. And that too needs to be sealed to prevent any wood boring insects as well as all the pathogens, bacteria and viruses that can get right into the heart of the tree and start hollowing your plant out. And here are some other examples. If you take a look at those smaller prunes, these are all holes going right into the wood and another one. And figs, more so than most fruit trees, have very soft hollow pits. Um, not hollow, but soft pith that can quickly become hollowed out. So um, an important reason for coating them. And that's what we're gonna do here next. So what I've got here is Ivy Organics. It's a three-in-one tree guard paint where you just add water. It's a natural tree trunk and branch barrier protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents. For use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. It's a non-toxic, environmentally safe and organic product. And you can see here that it says, ideal for new plantings and transplants, save injured and damaged trees, prune and expose surfaces. And that's what we're gonna be using it for right now is to coat those prune and expose surfaces. And over here, I just wanna share our, our gold label of the Ivory Organics. And you can see here it's now registered material for use in organic agriculture. And this label will be coming out probably in the late winter to um, early spring. So take a look at for um, our new label that'll be coming out soon. But all we're gonna do here now is um, open this can. And I've prepared it just before the video. So all I'm gonna have to do here is just mix it. And what it is is organic paint with a lot of organic oils. Um, some of the oils repel rodents, but the other oils in it um, repel insects naturally. And what we're gonna do is just coat these exposed surfaces. Take a look over here. So this was where the dead wood was before, right in here. And we're just gonna seal that. The other part down here that was damaged years ago, we're gonna just fill that in as well. And that'll offer it protection as well by being coated. And another observation I found here as well, if you can come low enough, is you'll notice that there's this band around the tree. And this band is supporting the irrigation system for, this, um, for the fig. If you take a look here, this is a sprinkler system. It's They're on a drip. But this band is on the fig tree so tight, it's actually constricting the, um, the living tissues underneath it. There's a cambium layer that's underneath here that's transporting all of the waters and sugars up and down the tree. If this doesn't um, get removed, you're actually gonna be compromising the health and the life of the tree. So I'm gonna get some tools to actually remove this metal band um, that the tree has now since outgrown since this was installed probably um, three to five years ago. So um, we're gonna remove that. But again, I don't have the tools to unwind this and help allow this plant to breathe a lot better because right now it's being constricted. And now we're here just gonna seal these holes as well. And 
up above as well. I'm just gonna allow that to soak right in, like so. If you have any concern with rodents in your garden, it's important to actually coat the entire tree trunk all the way down to the base of the tree and cover the first couple feet of the plant. Additionally, by coating it, you'll be offering the heart of the tree, which is the trunk and the lower branches with protection against sunburn as well as sun scald because as soon these leaves are going to fall off and if there's any risk of daytime temperatures getting so warm that it pulls the sap back out of the ground and then the nighttime lows fall again below freezing, that can cause the bark to crack and I can show you examples of what that will look like as well. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to like it. Most importantly, subscribe down below so you'll be connected to all the other educational gardening videos by Ivory Organics. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.